Thank you so much. Welcome everybody to the North Mississippi Symphony Orchestra's final concert of our 2023-2024 season. I have a few things to go over. I don't usually like to speak with paper in my hands, but we have a lot to go over before we welcome everyone out for tonight's performance. My name is Brooke Burleson. I am the Executive Director of the Symphony Orchestra, and I just came on board in February, so this is my second concert. And I wanted to just say a very large thank you to our sponsors and our patrons, our season ticket holders, and just anyone that has attended our concerts this year or supported us in any way. We could not do it without your support and your generosity. So. If you will, please give a round of applause for our sponsors, patrons, and season ticket holders. We would not be here without you. If you flip to the beginning of your programs, you will see an insert that looks like this. I scribbled on the back of it, as you can see. Um, this is a QR code for you to access a link to purchase season tickets for the 2024-2025 season. So those tickets are live online today. You can begin purchasing them right now. You can also purchase individual tickets for any of our concerts for the upcoming season. And our season schedule is has been announced. It is currently online if you would like to check that out. If you are interested in being a sponsor or a patron for the 2024-2025 season, please call us. Um, our number is on this insert as well as the back of the program or shoot us an email We have not made those options live online just yet, but they are available for you to begin purchasing starting today Okay, so finally let's get to why we're all here tonight's performance our final performance of the season is titled musical voices of tomorrow and it features a very accomplished young pianist Sehun Kim, who came all the way from Boston to be with us this evening. We also have a few members of our North Mississippi Youth Orchestra who will be accompanying our professional musicians this evening. So we are so excited to welcome them on stage. And now I present to you the North Mississippi Symphony Orchestra under the direction of Maestro Stephen Bias. But first, please let's welcome Jenny Wigwa. Good evening and welcome to Musical Voices of Tomorrow with the North Mississippi Symphony Orchestra. Everyone on this platform, and likely many of you in the audience, remember a moment in your life when music touched you deeply. My moment, my seminal moment, was when I was eight years old and hearing an orchestra for the very first time. That experience instilled a lifelong love of music and a passion to support music education, and young musicians whenever I could. This program tonight is designed to welcome young musicians into a professional environment, to play alongside professional musicians, to have someone model great orchestral and individual instrument playing, but also to mentor them. And we welcome tonight in our orchestra seven members from the North Mississippi Youth Orchestra, a dynamic and wonderful organization that services a lot of students throughout this region. And I'd like to acknowledge those. I think in your program you have the names, but what are North uh, 
uh, the Mississippi Youth Orchestra students please stand, please. Yes. make a whole human being, I thought, let's seize the opportunity for public speaking, and I've invited four of the members to introduce the music on the first half of the program. So introducing the Mendelssohn A Dance of Clowns, would you please welcome Abigail Bautista and Garrett Weeks. My name is Garrett Weeks, and I'm in the 12th grade, and I also play violin in the North Mississippi Youth Orchestra. Felix Mendelssohn's score for William Shakespeare, A Midsummer Night's Dream, is probably the most famous instrumental music ever written, <laughs> with Beethoven's music for Gerdes Egmont, a close second. Mendelssohn's composed the miraculous overture as a 17-year-old, and the instrumental music dates from the near end of his life. Felix and his sister Fanny were very gifted musicians, and their sister Rebecca was an adept linguist who could read Homer in the original Greek. The children were tutored in English, French, and German, and when they weren't playing or making music, they read voraciously. Shakespeare was a favorite, and Felix and his sisters would read the plays aloud, acting out the different parts. A favorite play was A Midsummer Night's Dream, with its fairies, elves, and magic spells easily have Hendrick's children's imagination. The rich poetic imagery was just the stuff to stoke the fires of Felix's imagination. The musical movement, A Dance of Clowns, is a musical picture of the character Nick Bottom, whose head has been transformed into that of a donkey. The music begins with a series of accented fortissimo chords in the low strings and brass, and as they pound out an earthy rhythm before the orchestra gives us Bottom's musical braying theme. You'll hear it clearly. It sounds like a real hee-haw. <laughs> this is a dance of clowns from a Midsummer Night's Dream by Felix Mendelssohn.
And now introducing the Bizet, suite number one from Carmen. Uh, please welcome Kathleen Gang Lim and Lisi Ava. Lisi Oliver, I am in the 10th grade and I play violin in the North Mississippi Youth Orchestra. Bizet completed his opera, Carmen, in 1874, and it was first performed by the Opera Comique in Paris in 1875. It was considered a complete failure, mostly because the audience of the Opera Comique was expecting a happy ending, and the opera does not end happily. It played to be played for dwindling audience until the management resorted to giving tickets away. In October 1875, the opera was staged again in Vienna, and this time it was recognized for the masterpiece that it is. But unfortunately, the composer passed away before he could witness his success. The plot centers around Don Jose, an upright officer who is engaged to his childhood sweetheart. Carmen, a gypsy, is arrested and seduces Don Jose into letting her go. She promised to, to meet him later. Don Jose gives up everything for him. His commission, his childhood sweetheart, and his family. But after six months, Carmen tells him she does not love him anymore and leaves to chase after a bullfighter. Outside the bullfighting ring, Don Jose tries to convince her to come back, but she rejects him. In a fit of rage, he stabs her. The composer juxtaposes the horror of the murder with the cheers of the crowd during the first suite contains music from six different scenes, but not in the same order as in the story. A prelude says the Spanish tongue, introducing us to the tragic fate theme, which appears throughout the opera. It leads without pause into the area maze based on the Spanish steps, the hotel. In the opera, this is played as act four begins and the crowd watches together to watch the blue fight. The intermezzo is from act three, a tenor theme as Don Jose expresses his love for Carmen. The Segadilla is the song and dance from Act One, where Carmen seduces Don Jose as he turns away from his childhood sweetheart and his life as a soldier. The Dragon de Acala is the marching song of Don Jose's regiment. The suite concludes with the famous Toreador song from Act Four, depicting the spectacular parade as the bullfighters march to the ring. This is the suite number one from the opera Carmen by Bizet.
Russian composer Igor Stravinsky was making a name for himself, creating essentially what would be a change in the course of music with his brash modernist style. This was an enormous contrast to the music of Sergei Rachmaninoff. Rachmaninoff studied piano with Anton Marinsky, who had studied himself with Rinsky Korsakov, and also studied piano with Tanya, who was a student of Tchaikovsky. So romantic music was in Rachmaninoff's blood. About this time, in 1909, Rachmaninoff's career as a concert pianist was exploding. He was considered by any measure one of the finest pianists who had ever played the piano. He was invited to take a tour of the United States and perform with the New York Symphony Orchestra, which is now the New York Philharmonic, under the direction of Walter Demmersch. And for that occasion, he decided to write a new concerto for which he would be the soloist. And that is the concerto number three that shows you tonight. He was considered unplayable for a while by anybody except Rachmaninoff because of the stretches and the other things that are required to play it. Slowly, it earned its way into the standard repertoire for concert pianists, although it's still really difficult. One of the most challenging concertos, and I think you'll be astonished by the young man that we brought here tonight to perform. Last summer, at the Cleveland International Piano Competition for Young Artists, over 100 pianists from all around the world, some of the finest pianists, young pianists, competed, and Si Yun Kim was clearly the winner. I had the great pleasure of conducting the final round with orchestra, with these young soloists playing concerti, and Se Hyun, I have to say, was the clear winner, and that's saying a lot with the extraordinary level of these young musicians. We're so happy to have him here. It really is a great reflection of our musical voices of tomorrow. Would you please welcome our soloist, Se Hyun Kim.